My name's Brother Ken Vance, I'm a Jesuit brother uh, and I grew up in the area just at the top of Brunswick Road. Uh, I left Liverpool at the age of 18 and I came back about 20 years ago and was administrator here at SFX for 17 years. Well, uh, St Francis Xavier's was in fact the largest Catholic parish in England and Wales uh, in the 1950s. Uh, it's, uh, was, well, there was one church larger and that was in Scotland, but it had the largest Catholic population in a very small area. It was from Soho Street up to Low Hill and then along to Everton Brow. So it was quite small, but very compact, but lots of people. My sister was born on the 12th of July uh, and we lived at the, the top of Low Hill. So it was a mixture of Catholics and uh, Protestants up at that end. But uh, it was an incredible time because uh, the Sundays leading up to the 12th of July and afterwards were quite tense in the area. The build-up uh, on the Sundays before, as you know, there was the opening of the book and so on. And there'd be masses every hour on a Sunday morning here. But the 11 o'clock mass, which is a solemn high mass in Latin with a choir, uh, that was the, the uh, time when the lodge marched up along on Shaw Street. And normally in those days, mass was in Latin. But the final hymn was always in English, and it was either Hail Glorious St. Patrick or Full in the Panting Heart of Rome, two triumphalist hymns, and everybody sang with gusto. If 12th occurred during the week, we were asked to come in by 8 o'clock. The lodge normally marched after 9, you know, after the rush hour, so to speak. Uh, so we were brought in, and the primary school just was on the edge. In fact, it's uh, uh, in the, on the Hope campus where it was located and we came in at eight, the doors were closed and we'd have an assembly. And of course, as the lodge passed and there was a lot of the lodge in those days because Netherfield Road just been down the road, um, we were singing hymns or uh, having some sort of assembly, but there was, it was quite tense, uh, we were almost under siege mentality. Uh, and you were very conscious with the bands going past. And of course, there was the, the story that uh, the guy uh, on the big drum the one who could burst the skin would get a prize. Uh, I don't know whether it's fictitious, but that's what we, we were told. Occasionally the odd brick had come over the wall and it was returned, I must add. But um, it really was a very tense time and, and we'd sing louder and uh, they'd try and sort of distract us, the teachers. But, you know, with bands going past uh, and a lot of them, it was very difficult. Oh, well, mixed marriage is a bit very interesting. In fact, my auntie married an Orangeman and both sides didn't speak to them for some time. Uh, finally, there was reconciliation. And in fact, when my uncle, who was the Orangeman, died, he was buried up at St George's and there was a kind of reconciliation afterwards at the Derry Club when they lined up a load of whiskies for me, almost saying, you know, we've, we've laid Uncle Teddy to rest, but also the bigotry.